My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Transport Fever 2 Hard Mode as we continue our series. Now, before we get started properly today, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who pointed out that this cargo exchange that we'd set up previously didn't have a working connection to the station. I did notice it myself off camera while I was uh, just playing through and testing, so it has been fixed. So that's now, as we can see, it's accepting the deliveries of the tools and they are then being shipped onwards into West Ham for consumption, as we can see. So thank you very much for that. Uh, as I said, I had spotted it myself, but if I hadn't, the reminder would have been greatly appreciated. And if you do happen to notice any other snafus like that or errors that I tend to make, please let me know and I'll do my best to correct them. So what's the plan for today's episode then? Well, if we head over to Nuneaton on our following our passenger train line here, we will see that I've made a start extending the network outwards from Nuneaton. I've done a little branch line that's heading towards Bakewell, as we can see there. And I've extended what will what or sorry, what is forming the main passenger line. And that's now heading up towards Blythe. What I'd like to do today is try and get these two towns connected to the passenger network. The Bakewell to Nuneaton will be a small shuttle service. And Blythe, what we'll probably end up doing for now, is extending the mainline service to run all the way from Blythe through to West Ham. I realise that we're going to probably need some shuttle services as well. Because if we have a lot to pick up in Blythe and in Nuneaton, then we have, there's a very real possibility that when we get to Portishead, the carriages are going to be full, so nobody can get on to head towards West Ham from Portishead. Other changes that I've made off camera, if we can see here right now, which is suitable timing, the mainline trains are now being operated by the Mallard steam train. They're now hitting 75 miles per hour, so they're matching the Flying Scotsman that we have running the express line from West Ham to Nuneaton. But I figured it's probably a decent idea to have our mainline train hitting as high speeds as possible as well. Because that's going to increase our frequency on the line services, and that should encourage more passengers to opt to take the train rather than private transportation. Other than that, I've done a few tweaks and balances to various lines, usual sort of stuff. Expanded a few bus networks in Portishead and West Ham as well. Nothing too exciting, just general maintenance and upgrading, the usual sort of stuff you do from time to time. But I thought I'd do it off camera because we've all seen it before anyway. So without any further ado, let us head to Nuneaton and we'll continue our passenger lines. If we get time today, what I'd also like to do is start supplying bricks into Nuneaton. And ahead of time, I have had a quick scout about, and we do have a brickworks right here, which sits close to this junction on our cargo line. And there is a stone quarry over here as well. So my current plan is to actually haul the stone in to the brickworks, have a cargo station perhaps here. We'd have to remove this road, but we'd have the cargo station here. And then that would connect into this line. And somewhere on this corner, we would then branch off. Or what we could do, actually, second idea, is we could, because we have a station here already, which is not a million miles away from Nuneaton, we could put in, well, we could activate this outer platform here and have that as a bricks drop off and then have a truck exchange here and then use the vehicles, the road vehicles, to ship them into Nuneaton. That way we're utilising existing infrastructure, we're not chucking train lines down everywhere. We would need to lay train lines from here into here, and then put a connection in from the brickworks, obviously. If space allows, we could try and squeeze in the cargo station along here, and then we have a more direct connection into the existing freight line. This would make this junction rather busy because we'd have trains coming in this way, trains departing up this way and coming in this way. And then eventually we'd have the stone coming in onto this junction as well. And we'd have our brick trains 
using the lines in this area so it could get quite busy so we need to make sure our junction work is as efficient as it can be obviously that's all for the future what we want to do now is finish getting these lines set up however and given that Blythe is the one we're going to have on the main line we're going to start with Blythe or at least we're going to pour our focus into Blythe before we get started I want to bring up the land use layer so our residential district is over on this side which would be the eastern side of town and we have the commercial and industrial here on the western edge which is quite handy because I like the train station to go here and that's going to minimize the impact of any noise pollution from the trains and the train station negatively impacting our residents who are nicely sheltered away over the other side of town okay so let's get the station down first of all we can have a fairly small building size and I'm just debating whether I want a pass-through station maybe linked up to Yoxall or would we have this as a terminus for the time being we'll just go for a pass-through generic UK station we want two tracks and we'll go for that's probably a bit too large for what we need let's say 240 meters full canopy length and building size sorry building color as blue catenary yes so if we were to situate our station perhaps there just see where the train line is yeah that gives us plenty of room to curve the lines around to meet up with the lines that we've put down off camera so let's get these extended out first of all and as usual what i'm going to do is keep the first stretch as straight and as level as possible that makes putting in any diamonds a lot easier and we can have high speed here although that's probably a little bit excessive we i doubt our trains are going to be running at 150 miles an hour as they leave the station but they certainly could be as they're on their approach although as we can see having a bit of trouble um, collision okay maybe the diamonds a little too large then so let's try that again I did think 150 is probably a little excessive if we go for 100 that's a very still very high speed isn't it there we go so there's the diamond in position what we want to do now is very simply and we might even be able to do this in one connection let's see what that does for our speeds on the corner absolutely perfect and this is the inner radius so it will be the tighter of the two so if this one's doing 186 then you can guarantee that the outer one which obviously travels that extra bit further because it's on the outer edge will also be doing 186 so there we go that was a very simple simple build to put together off camera i will go through and paint over the central ballast with the grass paint tool just to hide sorry the ballast paint tool which will hide this grass growth that you get from time to time i think we've already got a diamond down here we do indeed so let's now signal this entire length of track and let's try maybe maybe use a two aspect signal for this one just to mix it up a little and we want the auto signal feature enabled 400 meters is more than enough space for our trains for blocking and it's also not been too excessive by putting too many blocks in at the same time so there we go plenty of blocks down there for our trains what we can do now is mirror that on the return journey from Blythe to Nuneaton like so that's our intermediate blocking done what we want to do now is put the blocking just before the diamonds at each end of the station so one there like so and then we want one on the way into Blythe like that and then as per usual not necessary but I like to do it we will put one-way signals prior to the slip switch or the diamond switch from this station end they're a little close but it's fine and that allows our trains to make a move and wait here in case there's something ahead of them and then they're not occupying the platform unnecessarily as you can see here, i have put a depot down this is not a workable depot it's just an asset i just put it down just to fill in this 
bit of dead space that we had between these two branches. So that's all that is. But anyway, the main line up to Blythe is completed. However, work isn't done yet because we need to get our passengers into the station. So for that, we're going to use a bus tram station. Blythe, hmm, we'll keep it. Yeah, it's just the one. I was thinking how how much will Blythe expand in the future. And I don't see it becoming a particularly large town. Although it's going to be larger than, say, Bakewell and Yoxall, which I believe I'm going to artificially limit their growth by putting a uh, choke on how many goods they receive. Now, that's going to have the effect of keeping these towns quite small, which is fine. It is nice to have a few small towns on your map. You don't want every city to be a mega urban conurbation. So back to Blythe then. Let's rename this to Blythe Station Exchange. It's a bit more fitting of a name. We're going to need an exit on that side. And then we want to connect these two into the existing roads that service Blythe at the moment. The, no, we don't want a bus lane, but we do want electrified tram line. And where's going to be a decent place? See, I was thinking that, but that makes this quite close junction. But what we could do is, yes, it's going to demolish one industry there, but so be it. But we could have this road instead come this way on the diagonal. And we'll have this straight like that. That'll work better. This one should be a direct, nice and easy connection on this side without too much hardship. And let's have a look. Yes, that's fine. And then we want to plan out whereabouts in Blythe we're going to have our central passenger station. And I think we'll go there or up here. And this will allow for further expansion up this way around our passenger exchange in the centre. And it will keep it pretty central in the expanded town, if that makes sense. So to make our intentions clear, we're going to put down a station here. We are going to have to demolish that residence. And in fact, we'll do that now. This will be Blythe Central. And then we want the exit on the opposite side. So we can pass straight through. Let's quickly connect these two roads together before they rebuild anything in this area. That should have been electrified. We must remember to upgrade that. And in fact, I shall do it now. Otherwise, I'll be confused as to why the trams are complaining. They can't get here. And what we'll have this do is run straight through the center. Like that. And this one will come... In fact, we'll probably loop it around there rather than coming down this way. So we want, yes, the regular size street for that. Oh God, that's didn't look the nicest. How is that? That's better. And again, that is not electrified. N oh, what have I done there? No, that's right. That's all electrified. Is that road electrified there? Yes. So we should have a full electrified tram circuit now, which it looks like we do. What I'm tempted to do is, while Blythe is still in its infancy, is actually upgrade this main street to a higher capacity road. It's going to cost a lot of money, but we do have a healthy bank balance. And it's probably worthwhile doing it before they expand too much. There we go. So there's your main, main street, main drag in Blythe. And before we forget, anything that's not a four-way crossroads, we're going to remove the traffic lights. So keep that one there and that one there. Don't think there's any other traffic lights in the town. There's one there which is unnecessary. That'll do just nicely. So now we can set up the first tram service for Blythe. So we want a new line. That's a very sickly green sort of colour there. Now as we can see, they're opting to turn around on platform rather than carry on through on the loop. So we're going to have to adjust that. And what I'm going to do is at Blythe Station Exchange, I'm going to set that to full, wait for a full load and drop the time down to say 60 seconds. Because I've noticed there are occasions 
in say Portishead and West Ham, where the tram will be here. The train will be just arriving, but the tram will depart with say two passengers on it. In the meantime, 80 people have just jumped off the train. So by making them hang around just a little, it just expands the catchment on your passengers. It's not really necessary, it's just something I'm experimenting with and so far it does appear to be working quite nicely. But for now let's continue with our building in Blythe. So we'll have a bus stop here, that's not a bus stop, that's a telephone box as a waypoint and that should be enough to trigger the trams to loop around the entire city. So after central please head to that waypoint, there we go, that's what we want them to do, nice and tidy. So this is the inner city metro and this is only serving Blythe station so we'll name it Blythe station as we have with Nuneaton, Portishead and West Ham keeps the naming system all uniform the last thing we're going to need in here is a tram depot and I say we'll put the depot no, we don't want to put it there because if we put it there we are going to block our train line in case we do want to expand it any further in the future let's put the depot here just set back just a touch that way as you know by now if it does later put in some traffic lights we can now remove them from this junction because they're totally not necessary because the trams aren't coming out of here all the while it's just as and when we purchase them speaking of which let's get some purchased We'll use the T1s in here, and for now we're just going to have two. We're not going to need many more than that at this point in time. It was this sort of weird green colour there. On to the inner city metro. And now the last thing we need to do is actually extend the main line. So we're now running Portishead to Nuneaton to Blythe. Like that and then heading back to Portishead, sorry, back to Nuneaton, like that. Uh, yes, in fact, yes, well, I usually have them on opposite platforms in and out, but since we have our direct line to West Ham here, I will allow that. And from there on, it does its normal thing of heading to Portishead, West Ham, blah, blah, blah. So that's all set up. It might take a while for to see some passenger generation here. But hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll start having some services picking up in Blythe and taking them onto our network. Now that that's done, we can do the stop in Bakewell. And again, let's use the land use layer. So our residential is on this side which would be the south side of Bakewell. Our lines are here, so what I think we shall do for this service is have the line cross this road. We'll have a bridge, or we'll convert this road to a bridge over the line at some point, so our trains don't hold up the traffic. And we'll have the station for Bakewell maybe here, aiming in that sort of direction, and that will allow the train line to then expand into Yoxall for another slow sort of shuttle service between Yoxall and Bakewell. So let's do that. So we want to get rid of that. We want a station. We can have a smaller building size for this one because it's not on the main line. And as I said, Bakewell and Yoxall will be limited in their growth artificially. And we can even have a smaller station out here. So if we have... Like I said, perhaps have the station aiming that direction. Just trying to get a nice overview here where I can see the line and the oxal together. So let's have it like that, just there. Might need to reorient this track so it's heading more this way, but we'll see what sort of speeds we're getting on these corners that we're about to lay in. For now, we'll start over here. And as per, it's going to be dead straight and dead level, just to facilitate a smooth and fairly rapid diamond. Okay, I say fairly rapid, we're only doing 70. But it's still nice and neat. And where's our line? So yes, we are going to have to reorient that line there, because as you can see, if we did it from here, we would curve 
that way and then that way and that's just unnecessary so let's first of all okay we have to pause it because we need to remove this road and it is a main connection so as i said we want to head this sort of way where's the line okay we need to curve a little more okay we have to sacrifice some speed here so what i'm tempted to do is rather than having a long fairly fast turn say like that at 150 i might have a more aggressive one here and given that we have a 70 mile an hour diamond if we say to keep that at 75 that way our trains are slowing down regardless because they're coming into this diamond and let's keep that level although it looks like the land does drop off here so since we're slowing down anyway let's have the gradient at this point or the gradient change because we're slowing down regardless so may as well kill two birds in one stone there and now we'll slowly start to open up the radius to get a little bit more speed and this should be now heading in roughly the right direction and now we can really start to open up and if i have that pointing that way then we'll remove this little bit of track here and have it connect straight over so before we do anything else let's just reconnect this road because it is a main connection and we'll take that back because we're going to rework it a touch and in fact we'll take it back from there as well and what we want to have is this is a country road large country road we do not need any tram lines out here we want to start rising upwards because we're going to want to bridge over this train line see if that's going to give us enough of a clearance to have a bridge not quite although if i do that could we no okay we're gonna have to raise this a little more aggressively then clearly no problem all trial and error so we want this to be straight like that let's raise up another notch and if you go straight now will you then bridge over you will let's keep this roughly symmetrical or as close as we can that's not bad oh it's a bit low and then from here we can just take this road out directly change that to not that to earthworks yes there we go close that down how does that look the bridge looks a little bit odd but at least it's clear of the train line which is the aim of the game here now we can restart the game because their connection has been re-established and we'll head back here and like i said we'll just take this back to say that point there and there's the tracks there we should now be able to do a straight shot i don't mind about the level crossing because we're going to reorient the road so the bridge over instead so yes that's fine good speed 186 it's only a short journey so i'm not entirely convinced any of the trains will hit maximum speed down here they'll certainly not hit 186 but we don't want to make it any harder for them than we absolutely have to so there we go so now we can sort these roads out so let's just get everything clear and this one here needs to be removed as well and if we say go there and what we'll do this time is we'll put the bridge in first and where's our roads so if we have the bridge like that let's just change the bridge style just to mix it up a little bit let's try instead the steel bridge from the vanilla game there we go let's get that as close as we can maybe can we just drag that foot away from the train line a little that's better yep perfect happy with that and then from here we're just going to quickly drop that into there using earthworks this might want to come back just a touch more just so the road isn't so steep i should have wanted to put that as earthworks let's just redo that little bit there there we go how does that look not too bad at all and then this road we're gonna reroute it so instead of having oh could we actually put a 
a bridge over there. Let's see. Again, let's just raise the track or the road upwards a little. Keep it flat. And then if we hump it, quite an aggressive hump because it's a short bridge. And again, swap it for that. How does that, does that look? No, I'm not happy with that. Okay, so what we'll do instead then is we'll have this connecting over here. You can start heading downwards and you can be just raised earthworks from here. Come down. And if what we'll do, in fact, is take that back even further. Bring it around like, how does that look? Not too bad. We can terraform this out if we want to, which we probably will. It looks just a little bit too artificial, if that makes sense. But in terms of our train line, we're now clear. That's the main thing. And we're connected up to Bakewell Station. We have our diamond there. This is just a single platform, so there's no need for a diamond, but we do have the merge point here. So all that's left for the train line is to put down our signals. One way, yes. Auto signal, yes. And again, we'll use the, uh, the two aspect signals for this line. And if we start, say there why has that not put in any other signals i wonder let's just try that again move that signal and go again that's better not sure why it didn't work the first time around but problem has been solved and then we'll have duplicate signals from this point but we want a short signal here just to clear the diamond like that. That can serve as a stopping signal for the diamond, that's okay. What about over here? Yes, we could have a signal pushed up to there. And that's fine to clear the junction. I can, I'll can use that to clear the junction, there's no problem with that. And then we'll do the usual thing here, just putting in the decorative almost signals for that diamond. And no, we'll not put, oh, we could put one just there. That shouldn't cause any issues. We don't have conflicting two-way signals, so that should work okay. So let's get Bakewell's connection set up in terms of the public transportation. We're going to have to just flatten out the land here a little bit so we have a nice smooth connection. And we're going to have to remove these roads to give us a bit more space to work. In fact, we'll take it all the way back to there. So here... I think here we'll just use buses rather than trams. But we will give them the full the full size. Okay, so we can't get a connection off of that. As we can see. Oh, there we, there we go. Just verify that's connected. Yes, it is. Although it might change once we put in this second street here. Let's just double check. Are you still connected? Indeed you are. This is just going to be Bakewell Station. Speaking of which, let's check the station at Blythe has an active connection. Indeed it does. It's highlighted it as we can see. And we have our first passenger. Uh, we can restart the game. Still had it paused. And while we're doing this, we'll let things develop in the background. We now want to use our small, uh, well our town streets, not small. And we'll connect that into there. It's going to remove an industry, but so be it. And this will connect into there we'll change that then to that style of street and if that will upgrade some of these small capacity roads that they have in Bakewell like that and where do we want to put our passenger exchange in the center maybe in this block here then our buses will run up here through and then back down at least that's what we want them to do so let's pause it while we delete all these buildings because they're very inclined to rebuild before I can do what I need to do so here we go okay this is going to generate traffic lights but that's okay because it is a four-way junction and then we want to configure this side okay so we might get traffic lights there as well at some point but that's okay and this is Bakewell Central Perfect. Let's put in a couple of extra bus stops for them. So, our station line. In fact, we'll keep the station line as point to point. 
And what we'll have, we'll just have a simple small service that runs through Bakewell on a loop like this. Simple small stop. And then we want to go from there to there. That's doing everything I need it to do, although it's going a bit funny over here. So we're going to need waypoints. And we want it, in fact, we want it to go onto platform one there, ideally. Let's see. Yes. And over here. Yes. So you're coming out this way, up here. And then, in fact, no, you do want to be on platform two. Yes. And then you're coming, let's put a few waypoints down, just so we can direct them through our street as we like. So we'll have a pillar box as a waypoint there. And we'll have a phone booth as a waypoint there. And then we want to, after the station, we want to hit this waypoint. And then after Bakewell Central, we want to come out. I'll oh, put that on the wrong side of the street. Okay, let's just put another one down. We'll leave that in, in place. It's decorative. And we might need it later on anyway. And you can be there. And then you're coming to that waypoint. And that's given us a decent enough loop around. So this was the inner city bus Bakewell station. Like so. And then we want to set up another line, which is just the, the town loop. And you're just coming around like this. Nice and simple. And this is inner city bus Bakewell number one. Very good. We need a depot to get the buses purchased. And we'll put the depot out of town. In fact, we'll put it on. No, we don't want to put. Yes. No, no, we don't want to put it on there. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'll make my mind up. Yes, I do. And I'll keep those traffic lights there. Because then we can marshal our buses in and out here without having to wait for the intercity traffic, the private transportation. That's heading this way to uh, Yoxel. Okay, that's, yep, that's all connected. That's all fine. Let's buy the buses. Uh, passenger, we'll use a Saura, Tusha. And we'll have a three for the station express line. And we'll have two for the inner city loop and there that sort of lilac color there we go so now we can resume the last thing you want to do is put in the little service that runs between Nuneaton and Bakewell so Nuneaton or Bakewell to Nuneaton obviously you've got to use that platform you don't have access to the others Although we do have access from this direction, so we can use our existing train depots to purchase the trains. And that's all you're going to be doing. Yep, that's fine. Let's just name this as the Intercity Shuttle. And this is Bakewell Nuneaton. So essentially this line here is just a feed line for the main line or for the express line. We could also perhaps think about putting an express from Blythe to Portishead if we wanted to. But we'll see what happens with the passengers and their destinations, but it's an option of course. For now, let's focus on this shuttle line and get our train purchased. Where did I put my passengers depot? There it is. So purchase the train. We don't need anything too extravagant for this, so we're not having the Mallard or the Flying Scotsman. We don't want any of these. They're too expensive to run for what we need. So we're just going to go with the A35, it's nice and cheap, it's still got a decent enough speed. And we want passenger wagons. We could even just go for a smaller carriage, given that we have a lower capacity or lower speed train. And that'll save us almost 100,000 on maintenance. Although we are dropping capacity, but it's not going to be a busy line, or hope, well, it's not intended to be a busy line. And to start with, we'll just have two carriages running this. That gives us decent speed, as we can see. 62, 62, and 55. Only 5 billion for the train. Let's head over so we can actually see the line, so we can assign it. It's a burgundy colour, which is that one. Put it on the line, and away we 
go. Okay, so I did say I'd like to think about getting the Brixington Neaton set up today as well. Uh, I think I'll leave that for the next episode, which will be in the next couple of days. Hopefully Wednesday or Thursday this week. Obviously kids dependent. And for today we'll leave this episode at this point. And what train or what vehicle or where do we want to end today? We could run on the shuttle line if we wanted to just because it's something new. Oh, what do we have here? We have new trucks and a aircraft which we're not using at the moment. We might use them later. For now, let's hop on board the Intercity Shuttle. Given that it's only a short journey between Bakewell and the Neaton, we will hop on board while the train's making its way over there so we have a bit more of a scenic route or a bit of a longer, a longer journey, shall we say. So yes, thank you very much for watching the video if you did enjoy it please hit the thumbs up button down below comments feedback suggestions always welcome i have been making notes of the train name suggestions that i've received so far i haven't actioned any of them yet but i have got them noted down so if anybody has any other train suggestions please leave them down below but all that remains for me to say is as always ladies and gentlemen you take very good care of yourselves it's tata for now